Greetings, star tribes, star brothers, star sisters, star beings. I hope this message finds you well as we're navigating so many different frequency upgrades right now. The energy is so strong and I myself am so grateful for the practices that I have because I'm like having to tether myself to the earth right now, given all of the shifting energies that have been transpiring since the Pisces full moon. I want to break this energy down for you in a few different ways, because it feels really important to talk about this, given that we're coming to the waning last quarter moon and soon the dark moon. And then from there, we have the Libra new moon which the Libra new moon this year is really important in the sense that we're opening the gates for a number of different holy days, holidays. We have Rosh Hashanah, we have Navaratri, and this portal that we're in right now is very significant because as we're preparing for these holy days, we're in this extremely liminal space. And there's a lot of possibility within the liminal you have a lot of potential available energy and with that you can move places and spaces in your life where there's been a lot of stagnancy stagnancy that perhaps you've been experiencing for months for years so what we have right now is a golden window of opportunity especially to connect with our ancestors and I want to be clear, our ancestors are absolutely, they, they are people who are part of our bloodline. Our ancestors are also our teachers or our mentors who have come before us and who have transitioned over. Our ancestors can be starry ancestors, beings from other lifetimes who we know we have traveled with. And our ancestors also can be beings that we know about through time and space and we really connect with them on a deep soul level a person like that can also be your ancestor so our ancestors are so much more even than that right because we can say our ancestors are literally within the elements themselves and the nature beings so this word ancestor encompasses so much more than what perhaps certain people might think about because they might just think of, oh, my grandmother or my uncle or, you know, um, someone along those lines. Even friends can be ancestors. And also, um, if you've ever been in an intimate relationship with someone and you've created a child with them, that person's lineage is also a part of your lineage. So you, you merge ancestors. And even if you separate, you still are connected through the ancestral realm. And I think it's really important to own that um, in the times that we live in, because especially when we have children, right? Like how do we bring more consciousness and healing to, to the youth, to the generations that are coming and really invite back in that village culture. And a huge part of the village culture is ancestral health and ancestral veneration. So there's so many places and spaces I could I could take what I wanna share with you. There's a lot that wants to come through, which is why I wanted to make a video because I'm feeling so much that writing it all down, it's hard to capture everything into words fast enough. I wanna, wrap up one more piece about the ancestors that being that one of the easiest ways to work with your ancestors is through offerings as you give offerings to them then the mutual reciprocity can flow and they can support and open channels and pathways for you and your life and uh, especially if you're someone out there like myself who has a child and is divorced um, even when I ended my marriage, I always knew that with my ex's uh, lineage that they were still part of my ancestral line, and they are, and I've always treated them as such. 
I give them offerings and it really helps so much in creating a healthy relationship as um, you're finding your way through co-parenting. So with that, the Pisces full moon cleared out, it dissolved so much. And I even felt it in my own personal life because it was the first time since being separated that uh, we took a family vacation and it was amazing. Very, very, very healing for my ex-husband and my daughter and I. And we got to come together in a way and really support our daughter and help her feel really like held energetically. And so I'm just sharing a little bit about that with you so that you can feel that where I'm coming from is a very authentic place of practice and devotion. And it comes from a space of also having gone through some darkness with my ex spouse in our separation as I think even the most conscious, um, the most conscious ways that we can end relationship, there's, there's always some sort of grief or struggle there. And that's okay, right? Like we live in a world where we're going to experience a myriad of sensations and emotions. And that's part of the joy of being human is to feel. Uh, to feel is something that people who channel angels and ascended masters and other high beings talk about that one of the greatest gifts of being human is that we get to have this experience of feeling things emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. We get to have the experience of feeling what it likes to take water into our body and drink it and allow it to move through the body. We get to have the experience of hearing and taking all of the the beauty of life in through these sensory organs and it's quite a gift but also as we know it can come with its own challenges and we have been through so many challenges personally and collectively since the great conjunction of saturn and pluto at the beginning of 2020 and really it started in 2019 with those eclipses and you know i could continue and take it back further and further and further because the way the astrology works is something doesn't just happen in a moment there's a reverberation just like when i play my gong there is a touching of the mallet to the gong and then there's a reverberation through time and space and that is also how astrology works and where we are right now is we're in between two ages one is dissolving, one is being birthed, and it is a time of great transition, transformation for all of humanity. And each one of us on a personal level, particularly since 2020, has had to shed and let go of many, many parts of ourselves, promises, dreams, relationships, places we're living, um, ways we're connecting with our community. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. We've all experienced some sort of great loss. And that loss gave a space for each one of us, if we so chose to take it, to really anchor into the sensation of the loss and the grief. And there's actually great medicine in being willing to anchor into those spaces and, and have an experience of that. Because when you go into that great void and that stillness, there is a magic that begins to happen where there's also an, a true opening for a potential that perhaps you never even saw. And what I believe has happened since this Pisces full moon is that for many of us who have been kind of living within a void on some level or another, something has shifted and opened. And there is a huge influx of information literally coming in through the sun, the stars, the moon. So I invite you in this time, especially between now and the Libra new moon, which the Libra new moon is exact on um, Sunday, the 25th of September. So between now and the Libra new moon, I really invite you to get out in nature as much as you're able to. Put your body on Mother Earth directly. 
allow yourself to gaze at the sun so that it's safe, you know, obviously not for like hours on end, but just allow that transformation of light codes to come from the sun into your eyes, into your whole body. Allow yourself to really receive uh, and also invite in as much peace into your living environment, uh, really creating sanctuary through the sound current you're bringing in, through what you're listening to. Uh, this is a really important time to be listening to as much mantra or sacred sound currents as you're able to because the ancestral field wants to work with us right now to really clear and move the energy that has been stagnant where we felt like we've been in this void or perhaps even a death portal itself and move the energy there is a massive potential of great great victory coming your way and it's going to be coming your way through these holy days of Rosh Hashanah and uh, Navaratri. And so with that, you know, from the Jewish cosmology, Rosh Hashanah is the new year. It is an opening of blessing, of fertility, of possibility. And in the tradition, there is a call to make sure that you're inscribing yourself in the book of life for that next calendar year. So there's also this way of approaching the creator of God, goddess, source, consciousness with a humbleness, a humility to come in a way like we would in connection to the golden age of Ma'at and these 42 virtues, these codes of living. We come to source knowing that we're humble and that we're human and that we we work to do good on this planet and also we all make mistakes and that is part of our evolution and our growth and so when we can come in that humble way it allows us to really open up through our heart space and to receive the great blessings that the ancestral field wishes to pour forth for you and then with navaratri there's this great honoring of durga and how durga is there to really overcome the obstacles and she can come in the form of Lakshmi or Sarasvati. Sarasvati being our connection to wisdom and our speech and the way our mind works and song and uh, writing and I see Sarasvati also if we're connecting to the Egyptian cosmology as being like this feminine counterpoint counterpart to Tehuti or Thoth and so this weaving of words right and we can only weave consciously if we know how to calm the mind and that is why being in nature and being very selective about what kind of speech you're using what kind of thoughts you're having and who you're around and what energy fields you're orbiting within and then as we consider Lakshmi, she is our potential to great, great everlasting abundance, opening the way, opening the path for, for the riches to flow. And the riches to flow are beyond material wealth. We're speaking about our ability, true prosperity is our ability to be present for this life and to enjoy, to enjoy what is here, to enjoy the beauty of nature and the abundance that you already have. Because as we have that attitude of gratitude, that state of enjoying, you are able to magnetize so much your way. So I want to um, really distill to you that this is a very magnetic time we're in right now as we have all planets retrograde except for Venus. Mars is technically not retrograde, but is in the shadow of retrograde. And Mars's ruler, because Mars is answering to Mercury, since Mars is in Gemini, is retrograde. So we have Venus direct every other planet retrograde. And I spoke about this in episode 49, how Venus in Virgo 
can be really harsh and overly critical sometimes. And so we want to be gentle with ourselves right now. We want to really honor our own unique paths and to continue this journey forward, to continue moving forward, knowing that we're coming to this point of massive rebirth with this Libra new moon that is going to prepare us for the fall eclipse season, the Beltana, or sorry, the Samhain, not Beltana, Samhain, what well, will be for our brothers and sisters in the Southern Hemisphere. You all will be experiencing Beltana, but here in the Northern Hemisphere, the Samhain eclipse portal, that is going to really open some massive gateways for the end of 2022. I hope you're feeling me and understanding that this astrology is so profound right now. And I wanted to share that with you. And I also want to offer to you that at, in April of this year, it was April 12th, we had the Jupiter-Neptune great conjunction in Pisces. And as Jupiter is transiting retrograde, you know, backwards, Jupiter is coming back to come back into the orbit of Neptune. And so there is like a second wave, so to speak, of that conjunction moving through. We're still feeling the reverberation of Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn in January 2020 and all the other great conjunctions in 2020. I mean, I could just talk for like a whole hour on that alone. Remember, we had the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction at the first degree of Aquarius on winter solstice of 2020. And you can go back if, if you haven't been following this work through Earthsea Temple Arts. You can go back through some of my older posts on Instagram. I was in Egypt at that time, really helping to anchor that energy with the pyramids. And uh, on some level, this great shift that we're now coming to experience. So what do you do with this? You take really good care of yourself. You drink lots of water. You eat grounding, nourishing foods. You get as much rest as you can. Lay down on the earth, in nature. Hear the sounds of the Neturu. Connect, connect with your ancestors. Give gratitude, even if it is hard because you're going through so much intensity. Find a place to give authentic gratitude for what is working. I guarantee you, so many gifts are coming your way. And the more each one of us consciously works with this portal as we're waning to this Libra new moon, the greater benefit it's going to help all of humanity at this time. <sighs> that was like so much wanting to come forth. This was probably like my seventh take on this video. <laughs> Thank you so much. You've made it 18 minutes in. You're amazing. And I could just continue to go on and on and on. <laughs> I want to say, you know, on a personal level, the energy since the Pisces full moon has been off the charts. I am a very grounded person. I'm very committed and devoted to my work. And I sit down, I have my list of things I need to do. And I sit down and I'm like, okay, I'm going to focus. And I am just like all over the place. So if you too are feeling all over the place, that is a sign that you need to get outside. You need to place your bare hands and feet in the earth or lay down on the earth. You need to just take care of your body and come back to your work after you've done that because there's a lot of energy that is coming through the stars, the sun, the moon, and you want your physical body to receive the energy so you can integrate it. That's super important as we're working with this timeline shifting that, again, I just want to emphasize I think many of us know how important the year of 2022 is and has been. I've been speaking about how this is the year of Hieroscamos, really anchoring in through our inner feminine, our inner masculine. This is something we talk about with the Egyptian cosmology as every single human has a Ka body and your Ka body is your energy double in the opposite gender. And so each one of us, we're, we're carrying this polarity within us. 
And as you can really anchor in to your own inner feminine and inner masculine, we come from the space of being these spiritual, grounded, mature adults. And from that space, you are limitless. You are available to realize your dreams, to be successful, to be prosperous, to be of service, to be in your full creativity and devotion. So thank you so much for all that you're already doing here on earth in these times. I know that we've been going through it. I say that as someone who has deeply, deeply, deeply been in my own really challenging processes. And it is because of my own initiations that I can speak to you in this way because I'm seeing I'm starting to see the results of the prayers and the offerings and and the great work that has been put in. So I offer you many, many, many blessings as we continue to traverse the cosmos. And if you want to receive more updates from me, make sure you're receiving my weekly Venetian love notes. They come out usually on Fridays. I used to be like, so to a T every single Friday. And then since 2020 and all of the initiations I've been through, I've learned to kind of soften a little bit in that way because at times I've had to put me first. But generally speaking, they come out every Friday. My podcast generally every other Friday. And if you want to know more about astrology and the sacred art and science, we have just begun Skywalkers, which is a Foundations in Astrology five-week live course I'm offering online. We began on Tuesday. Everything is live, taught, and recorded. And um, I'm leaving the registration portal open until next Tuesday, just in case there are a couple of you that are like, wow, I really wish I had signed up and I totally forgot, or I wasn't sure if it was the right timing, but now I want to do it. So if you're feeling called to join in Skywalkers, it's a beautiful community of people that have gathered. I am just like so honored because this has been my dream to teach about astrology in this way for many, many years. But given the way that I am and the kind of like pressures that I put on myself, I just didn't feel ready to teach that until I completed my Master of Arts in Cultural Astronomy and Astrology, which I did this year. I received that award with merit and I'm also technically as an astrologer always learning always expanding my astrology practice I think is pretty unique because I do have um, almost two decades of devoted yogic practice sound healing practice my devotion as a priestess and devotion to Taoist stone medicine. And so those uh, aspects of myself and that variation of cosmology as well as my connection to the Egyptian cosmology really supports the way I approach astrology and gives it a very unique but also very grounded um, perspective that I know people love and they enjoy and they benefit from because I'm really devoted to speaking in a way that makes sense to you. <laughs> so, blessed be, may you and your lineage be elevated, uplifted, and free as we continue to journey through the cosmos. Satnam. <laughs>